plaintiff, Jacqueline Jackson, says the defendant dated her son. And even though their relationship was tumultuous, Jacqueline says the defendant was like a daughter to her. Jacqueline is suing her today for a credit card bill and the balance due on loans. Defendant Roxana Castillo says she came to the United States as a refugee when she was three years old, and she struggled to acclimate to life in the States. Roxana admits that Jacqueline helped her out financially, but insists she never asked for the money and therefore doesn't owe. Start with you. I met her about 20 plus years ago when I came home um, from Kuwait. She was uh, sitting in my front room and my son introduced um, her to me, you know, as his uh, current girlfriend. I had been gone, you know, um, overseas, you know, for quite a while. So um, her and I kind of established our own relationship. Uh, due to their relationship was, um, through the years, it kind of became tumultuous on both sides, you know, the breaking up, the fighting, the cheating, whoever. But basically they always got back together. Mm -hmm. So, but within that time, like I said, uh, Roxana and I established our own relationship. Basically she became um, like a daughter mm -hmm. to me. And um, it just continued on um, through the years, you know, me helping her out. Uh, she, you know, she was very young, uh, helping her just with, um, her, well, her and her family, you know, she has uh, younger siblings, you know, and a mother. And with it being somewhat of a language uh, barrier, um, because she is of Hispanic heritage, uh, she had been here for, you know, quite um, a time since she was two or three, I think, but helped her get her uh, paperwork done and everything since she was, you know, um, an adult now. Years, it kind of became tumultuous on both sides, you know, the breaking up, the fighting, the cheating, whoever, but basically they always got back together. Mm -hmm. So, but within that time, like I said, uh, Roxana and I established our own relationship. Basically, she became um, like a daughter to me. Defendant Roxana Castillo dated the plaintiff's son, but the plaintiff claims their relationship was riddled with cheating, making up, and breaking up. Okay, let me get some background from her, ma'am. Um, uh, well, well, I did come out here when I was uh, three years old. Um, I came here under refugee through the uh, Civil War in El Salvador. Okay. Uh, my family came that out. That was in 1980s? In the 80s. It was a language barrier. It was a barrier all the way around to learn English, uh, to go to school and keep up with the other kids. Around the time when I was 10, I remember California has stopped speaking bilingual. At and, schools? Yes, the schools. So I remember my teacher one day talking to me in Spanish, and then she was talking to me in English and told me she couldn't talk to me in Spanish. Mm. So that was tough. School was tough. I hung in there as much as I could. Eventually, you know, it was tough. I stayed home to help my mom. Um, I didn't finish school. After being a, a, in a group family, my mom decided to venture on her own and things got real difficult. So um, I wasn't attending school like I was supposed to, but further in, I went back uh, to Job Corps and I finished my high school diploma Good. in one year. Good. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I went into Even my Even after having been put at a disadvantage. Thank you. <laughs> after that, I did a CNA course and um, came back. But before all of that um, was possible, like Ms. Jackson said, she helped me through. I didn't even know I was a, an illegal citizen until it was time to go and actually apply for certain things. What age were you? I was about 19. I was established, I got a social security card, Good. I got my identification, and I went on to school. Good. So I got my high school diploma, did my CNA, and um, you know. Did you work in the CNA field? I've been in the CNA field for about 15 years now. All right, have you considered starting your own company, no. a home health care company? No, Because after... isn't that what you do? Yes. Okay, yes. those are very, very, very um, good Lucrative. living. Yeah, those are good companies. You make a lot of money in those type of companies now. Yeah. You know, um, but looking to get your own is, hey, you've been doing it that long, get your own. Thank and you. you. Start off with, I got my buddy, one of my dearest friends, George Murphy. He started out with three 
people, um, clients okay. to serve and three young ladies to work for them. Okay. Now, 350. Mm. And you can't take any more. Yeah. That you got me? I got it. All right. He was a Detroit hustler, though. <laughs> so he, was, he was on the grind. But I just want to give you an example of where you can go with that. And CNA workers, that's where you can go. Uh, you can get rich. I know a lot of you all are, oh, I said, CNA, I'm stuck. I'm not going to make this as many. Remember? No, I just told you what to do. You yes. can get rich in that field. All right. Okay. Tell me how she owes for the credit right. card and the loan. And um, back to, like I was saying, our relationship grew, but it, it remained, like I said, mother and daughter. Because mm -hmm. finally, about three or four years ago, I told the both of them, you know what? Leave me out of this. You guys get back all kissy face huggy and you're mad at me. I don't even know what happened. So um, as time went on, of course, you know, you have to renew your paperwork. Mm -hmm. And she needed um, an attorney, you know, to do that. So she asked if I could help her out. So I told her I would get her a credit card, see if I could get a credit card just for her. And I did. And she paid the um, attorney with the credit card. I made an agreement, well, actually a contract for her to pay me back, you know, the payments per month. Good. How much uh, was it? The, it started out $2,500. Mm -hmm. The credit card was actually 15 months interest free. Uh, so then, uh, and I drew up the contract, she signed it, then realizing this could go on for I don't know how long, I did an addendum so that it had to end within two years. Uh, like she said, she was working, making great money. I know that because I was helping her with her taxes and I knew she would be able to pay this off. So it went along, got the credit card, she paid the attorney, started the paperwork in the interim. Um, of getting the uh, paperwork renewed in December of 20, she actually got picked up by ICE. Of course, then everybody's crying. She's crying. Her sister's crying. Da -da, I'm crying. You know, okay, comes along January, had to get um, another attorney. That was another $3,000. He was able to get uh, paperwork, this and that, once everything came, you know, once they investigated and whatnot. And so then in order to get her out, or so that she could come home and get back to work and whatnot, it was another $2,500. The uh, attorney and the, um, the bond was all cash. Um, I had actually cashed out one of my um, 401s and then part of uh, my saving on the promise that, okay, you're going to pay me back. And an agreement was made through that. My son-in-law so. is the nicest kid you could know. <laughs> He's got a degree from a master's from Oxford, mm -hmm. Rhodes Scholar, all of that. I wouldn't do none of that. <laughs> he can pay me back 10 times. Well, of that. He can pay me back 10 times whatever I loan him, if I loan him money. Well, Your Honor, you do that if by now. And you got nerve to fall out with her son sometime. You should kiss him every time you see him <laughs> for his mother. Say, baby, this is for your mother. This is for your mother, even if you're you mad go. with him. Yeah. My goodness, yeah. I never heard Working of this. <laughs> never heard of this. Cash Working in her 401 for her son's girlfriend. Defendant Roxana Castillo dated the plaintiff's son, but the plaintiff claims their relationship was riddled with cheating, making up, and breaking up. Now that's where you got me, <laughs> cashing in your pension. Well, but I did it because I do have yet another beautiful grandson. I got two. I got two granddaughters Honor, from my son-in-law. I still ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> he was, but he was living with me and my son. Well. Now, you know, I've already raised my son, two other of his kids since infancy. Mm -hmm. It's time for me to have my time. Right. So it's like, and she's she is a great mom, and he was missing her. So I'm like, okay. You know what, after four months, yeah, okay, it, it, it's time for mommy to come home. You guys do need to be back together. Because you know, then with COVID and everything, could not see her in person, only on the Zoom. That was why I did it. Okay. So. And, uh, it's, it, and it's a great humanitarian <laughs> uh, gesture. 
and uh, contribution to society at large. Okay. Not only just her, but for society at large, folks who are immigrating need yeah. help and uh, whatever the legal status might be. And you've helped her. In fact, you helped with her legal status and that's to be admired. Uh, what is no good man at? Why are you here by yourself? That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. We both owe, and this is where we come into the little dark side. So um, I'm pretty sure he owes, but I'm the only one standing here. We're supposed you to be like- You should marry him. Y'all to owe him, y'all to owe together. <laughs> Go ahead. For sure. So back to um, what she stated, uh, I don't recall asking her for help with the credit card. We had a conversation about it. A couple of weeks went by and she said, look, I have this, 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 and this that I can help with. All you have to do is keep up with the payments. I kept up with the payments. Any loan that I have taken from her, I've paid back. How did she find out about your financial issues? Well, she does my income taxes. Okay. So she's, so it, she's it in there. So it's there. I mean, how did she find out your need? Oh, for the expirations coming for all from the monies that she put in your hand and credit card that you charge. How did she find out you needed those things? Well, the first one with the credit card, I told her I was all coming right. into expiration. And the next time, did you tell her that um, you had her find her a problem? The next time I was incarcerated. All right. And was there another time? Oh, a few years back, yes. And you and mentioned? I asked her verbally, "Hey, may I loan all right. a certain amount?" And my of money? point is, you start talking about all your financial problems. That's called dry asking. <laughs> I'm not going to use the word dry begging, <laughs> which is what I usually say. But that's dry asking. You were asking her for help. Why else are you telling her about your financial problems, <laughs> knowing that she got a couple of dollars? Yeah. No, I don't. That's what people get around me. <laughs> Yeah. I can't even call people and say hi, no, or how you doing? <laughs> I, I, all I can say when I call people, hi. I can't say how you doing. You know why? Why? They'll say, oh, I'm doing bad, real bad. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong? I gotta say, what's wrong? Right. I can't pay this, I can't pay that. That's what's wrong. <laughs> all right, I try another time. Start trying calling people in another way. Hey, man, what's up? Oh, ain't nothing up. <laughs> Everything down. <laughs> Things ain't going well. <laughs> Another time. What's up, Doc? You all right? No, I ain't all right. <laughs> so now all I can do is say, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you handle the calls. <laughs> Just say, hi. <laughs> when you call it, folks. Well, no, she has a t-shirt now that says, don't ask me for ish. There you go. <laughs> you got an extra one. <laughs> you get an extra, exactly. get an extra one for me. No, I, yeah, I take that back. Most people, my friends and family, do not ask me for money. <laughs> Perhaps because I'm generous, too generous as my wife might say. My wife criticizes me. Uh, when uh, I go particularly back to the projects, is we got that's the values there are when somebody come out of prison, <laughs> you see them, go in your pocket, you lay every dime you got on them. Here, man, wow. get yourself together. So, get in the car. I said, let me give me a few hundred. Let me give you a few hundred. You just gave all your money away. <laughs> she don't understand the yeah. street ethics. She's from suburb, middle class family. <laughs> I said, that's what you're supposed to do when they come home from prison. Then you hear the man say he'd been in prison 15 years and we were best friends before he went. Yeah, but what that got to do with you giving him money when they come? That's how I go. Why you have to give him all your money? That's a symbolic gesture. Yes, it is. I'm, right? Yes. You're with me. We I come from the same place. I came home and I was welcomed highly, yes. When you came home, mm -hmm. they laid it on you, didn't they? Mm -hmm. They sure did. And that's how I go. You go in your pocket and they give you everything in their pocket. Yes. That's a symbolic gesture. Cooked. Yeah. Yes. So you need to go to jail. <laughs> exactly. You know something? I guess. I guess so. You, no. you come home and you're getting laid on you. Get <laughs> 401k back. That's right. Exactly. I said, get your 401k back. Go to jail. Come out and look for your friends. Just lay it on you. Yeah. But you ain't been in the streets. So hey, they ain't you giving know. you nothing. They know you don't know no better. Defendant Roxana Castillo dated the plaintiff's son. But the plaintiff claims their relationship was riddled with cheating, making up, and breaking up. All right, what do you say to this other well, no, than actually, you didn't uh, ask her? Yeah. Um, you know, 
that's my biggest thing. Like, I, I didn't ask. Um, when I do ask for a loan, I've paid it back in total full. I went to jail. Um, I was bonded out about a week after that. Hey, look, this is what you owe me. I lost everything. I didn't have a car. I was getting ready to get kicked out of my house. I didn't have a job. So I had no funds coming in. Neither did she. And she had given up the funds that she had, a 401k, man. You may not I didn't know, know how important that. that is. Yeah. I didn't know that. But that's all you have to take care of you. If, if, if she needs extra expenses for her care, for whatever type of care, then that's where most people, it comes from their pension and their Social Security. When are you going to retire? I'm retired now, there but I don't get my Social retired. Security. Pardon? I'm not getting my Social Security yet. So you see, she's on a fixed income. Exactly. You mm -hmm. can still get rich, like I'm telling you. Right. And I just told you how, real quick. So start small and go big, because you're going to have to pay her her money back because she's on a fixed income and doesn't have anything. And I think you will try begging. I think you will call and probably crying from jail. Mm -hmm. You didn't ask her. All you got to do is cry. What you think going to happen? Every day. Didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. So I, was, I was on a trip back to El Salvador. I did. Judgment for the plaintiff. You're a great lady, yeah. but don't do that anymore. And you better take use your profession. Because when she needs somebody to come care for her at that house, you better come there scot-free. <laughs> so you use that CNA, that certified nurse's aid experience. Oh, by the end, you'll have so much money, you can just send one of yours over there. You'll have about 200. <laughs> Amen. You just say, send one of them. Y'all, one of y'all go over there. And I want you over there 24-7. Because <laughs> she looked out for me. Got me out of jail, mentored me. Did everything she could for me, even though her son was no good. She <laughs> stayed in there and hung in there with me. So I'm taking care of her. Okay, what happens? Girl, you got somebody going to take care of you. Call me if she don't. I will. <laughs> Just have a good day. <laughs> Just have a good day. Later. Roxanne, I just want to tell you, you know, I still love you. I always will as a daughter, even though you think I take my son's side. I don't. That's only because he doesn't tell you when I tell him off, right. okay? <laughs> and of course, he's not going to tell you that. But anyway, no, I love you, and I'm still, you know, going to do for you. Might not loan you any more money, okay. but <laughs> yeah. anything else, yeah, I'm still going to be there as mom, too, for you. Thank you. But I love her, too. And thank you for everything she's done. <laughs>